Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here with Adam today. Getting ready to go out and enjoy the last vestiges of, of heat and warmth. Yep. The <laughs> fall has got one day left. Yeah. Well, it's been a pretty amazing fall. Yep. I don't remember any uh, start to November that's been, been like this. We're going to be um, taking a look at Exodus uh, chapter 22. And um, it's kind of an interesting chapter. I think that we could learn something in our justice system by at least some of the, some of the concepts in here. Mm -hmm. It's like we've stayed taking a step backwards. It really uh, has. And instead of uh, understanding what would constitute real, like, real justice in the midst of this. So some of the things, you know, kind of are, are hard to equate to our time because... You know, I was talking about an animal or some, something like that. So, you know, think of it in terms of a car or some, some other uh, thing that is needed for your work in mm -hmm. some way. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to dig into this. Uh, I don't think we talked about, like, maybe you can read the first part up to, uh, through, uh, fi through 15. Okay. Okay. Exodus chapter 22. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he must pay back five head of cattle for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. If a thief is caught breaking in and is struck so that he dies, the defender is not guilty of bloodshed. But if it happens after sunrise, he is guilty of bloodshed. A thief must certainly make restitution, but if he has nothing, he must be sold to pay for his theft. If the stolen animal is found alive in his possession, whether ox or donkey or sheep, he must pay back double. If a man grazes his livestock in a field or vineyard and lets them stray and they graze in another man's field, he must make restitution from the best of his own field or vineyard. If a fire breaks out and spreads into thorn brushes so that it burns shocks of grain or standing grain or the whole field, the one who started the fire must make restitution. If a man gives his neighbor silver or goods for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house, the thief, if he is caught, must pay back double. But if the thief is not found, the owner of the house must appear before the judges to determine whether he has laid his hands on the other man's property. In all cases of illegal possession of an ox, a donkey, a sheep, a garment, or any other lost property about which somebody says, this is mine, both parties are to bring their cases before the judges. The one whom the judge declares guilty must pay back double to his neighbor. If a man gives a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any other animal to his neighbor for safekeeping, and it dies or is injured or is taken away while no one is looking, the issue between them will be settled by the taking of an oath before the Lord that the neighbor did not lay hands on the other person's property. The owner is to accept this, and no restitution is required. But if the animal was stolen from the neighbor, he must make restitution to the owner. If it was torn to pieces by a wild animal, he shall bring in the remains as evidence, and he will not be required to pay for the torn animal. If a man borrows an animal from his neighbor and it, it is injured or dies while the owner is not present, he must make restitution. But if the owner is with the animal, the borrow, borrower will not have to pay. If the animal was hired, the money paid for the hire covers the loss. Okay, verse uh, 16. <laughs> If a man seduces a virgin who is not pledged to be married and sleeps with her, he must pay the bride price, and she shall be his wife. If a father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he must still pay the bride price for virgins. Do not allow a sorceress to live. Anyone who has sexual relations with an animal must be put to death. Whoever sacrifices to any god other than the Lord must be destroyed. Do not mistreat an alien or oppress him. For you were aliens in Egypt. Do not take advantage of a widow or an orphan. If you do and they cry out to me, I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will be aroused and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives will become widows and your children fatherless. If you lend money to one of my people among you who is needy, do not be like a money lender. Charge him no interest. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, return it to him by sunset, because his cloak is his only covering he has for his body. What else will he sleep in? 
When he cries out to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. Do not blaspheme God or curse the ruler of your people. Do not hold back offerings from your granaries or your vats. You must give me the firstborn of your sons. Do, not, do the same with your cattle and your sheep. Let them stay with their mothers for seven days, but give them to me on the eighth day. You're to be with my you're to be my holy people. So do not eat the meat of an animal torn by wild beasts. Throw it to the dogs. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, give us uh, insight into your word. Help us to apply things to our own lives uh, where we can in our culture in which we live. Uh, help us to learn from you uh, about true justice and uh, help us to uh, take on, on ourselves the social responsibility that we have as we live out our calling in and through Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so the whole first part here is interesting to me because I think it would be a much better way to enact uh, justice. Uh, like you were saying before, before we ran, it's like our whole justice system revolves around punishment, and it doesn't really seem to work. It seems like uh, for a lot of people, uh, the, the recidivism rate, in other words, they get out of prison, they go back and they do the same thing, come back, is very high. So it's almost like you're producing more criminals in the way that we're doing things. And we don't have any concept of restitution. No concept of, uh, and I think it would, with the restitution would maybe come potentially reconciliation yeah, as well. Now it's hard work. Right, sure. doing that, but I think there's a lot to be said for for what they're they're saying. Excuse me, what they're saying here, uh, as far as you paying back, and sometimes in case double double that you're, you're paying back. I don't know. So, what's your thoughts on this? I don't know. In, in what's laid out in the first part here, it's very, it's more focused on kind of the victim of the crime, as in it's not just that they lost their thing. Like, right. it, it's not. You stole an ox, so I owe you an ox. It's double. Right. So it talks to the like the broken trust and the broken relationship there, and how there's a debt that's owed, and that person is responsible for that debt, and that kind of, I mean, speaks to our relationship with Christ in a way that it's mirrored that way. Yeah. We owe a debt that He pays for us, um, but at least in terms of like, like we said, um, stopping this in the future. This talks more to the crime than it does to, like, hey, you just sit in a box for a while and think about what you did. Yeah. Like, this actually helps the victim deal with what happened and brings the two together. It, and it, do, it does. There is some places where they do try something like this. In some states, the burden of things of, like, uh, restitution and reconciliation and the actual mm -hmm. confront, confronting of... Uh, you know, the, the person who perpetrated the crime is actually sitting it down across from the victim, and there's a mediator in the midst of all this. And there's some quite a bit of success with some of that, but uh, for the most part, yeah, we just like, well, you did this, you get thrown into prison. Yeah, but like you said, this is much harder than that. Yes, because, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a lot more valuable, uh, and it has a chance of reconciliation, because mm -hmm. you actually see... The other person is a human being. They're not just like, oh, well, that's the that's the person who's the, who took my stuff, and I don't care. They can rot away and whatever it is, and yeah. uh, we don't see them as a human being. Well, and and right. I think the person who committed the crime doesn't see the other person as the victim as a human being either. It's just right. something that to, to be had and taken. So yeah, there is there is work in this, yeah. um, but I think it's good. Removing that person from society doesn't fix society. You have to. Yeah, sit them down together to fix it. So I think there's some wisdom in here that we could uh, we could follow. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen in our justice re <laughs> and we have justice reform in that way. Um, and then there's kind of interesting uh, verse 14. If a man borrows an animal from his neighbor and is injured and dies while the owner is not present, he must make restitution. Well, that would be uh, <laughs> now this is their livelihood. You know, so this is an animal associated with their livelihood. But I would, you know, I think you think twice before and really take the responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. 
And I think we were talking beforehand about, like, I guess maybe the equivalent would be somebody says, well, can you, I'm going away for a while, can you uh, watch, can I garage my car, can, uh, you know, there? And maybe I think the, the equivalent would be, like, hey, you're just supposed to garage his car while the, while the person is gone. Uh, you didn't have permission to go out and drive it or anything like that, but what if you take it out and drive it and you wreck it? Well, then there's a responsibility right. on your part. And I guess in our culture, then the responsibility would be, uh, let's assume there's a sh insurance, but there's usually a deductible for the insurance, right. and you'd have to at least kind of cover that. Now, even that, you don't get replacement. Um, it's it's whatever the evaluation of the sure. the car is, which immediately, if, if you drive it out of the showroom, it goes down like immediately. Two thirds of the road, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, like, uh, for instance, like uh, our cars that we had, which all have over 150,000 miles on it, <laughs> it was wrecked. They, we basically would get nothing for it. But w what we would get wouldn't be able to give us, give us, give us a replacement, mm -hmm. no matter what we got. Right. We couldn't get a replacement. So, you know, I can see that. So, that, you know, there is there is a heavy responsibility laid on the person who's saying, yes, you've entrusted your stuff to me. I'm taking full responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have that concept either. No, the, like the responsibility of stewardship, I, I think it's very different in our time. All right. Yeah. And then the second half in 16 and following, you know, they have some kind of social responsibility. Let's say, okay, you know, hey, you went out and you, you seduced somebody. Well, then you're required to marry that person. Um, and it's, unless the father says no, uh, you, I'm not going to give you my daughter. Um, you still have to pay the bride price, which is, mm -hmm. which is a hefty sum, usually a hefty sum. In Middle Eastern cultures, they still have this concept. You know, you're, you're giving a, 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 lot, a large amount of money um, to be able to marry somebody. Um, and then some of these are, you know, kind of just straightforward, uh, sorceress, no good, mm -hmm. bestiality, no good. Um, but here's some things like, don't mistreat an alien because you were oppressed in Egypt. Remember from where you came from and, and be kind and generous to aliens that live among you. And then you see the heart of God for widows and orphans. Do you, it's, he says, don't, Verse 22, do not take advantage of a widow or an orphan. And there's quite a harsh thing here. It says, if, the Lord says, if they cry out to me, if you're taking advantage of them and crying out to, to they're crying out to me, then the sword is coming after you, and you're gonna you're gonna have widows and uh, orphans yourself. So God's heart um, says in the New Testament that. Uh, what is it? True religion uh, cares for widows and orphans. I think it's in James. Uh, so really that we should have a heart for those who are the most vulnerable within our society. Uh, whether it be widows, orphans, whoever it is. Whether, whether it be those who are oppressed uh, along racial lines. Whether it be those who are oppressed uh, for any reason within our, in our culture. Whether it be the unborn. right? Uh, the, the, that we should be uh, caring for, for those who are the most vulnerable. The elderly, the sick, the infirm. The uh, those who have various handicaps and uh, other things, so you know to care for them, uh, each and every person. Um, and then for lending, if you're lending to somebody in the church, it, it just basically says don't charge any interest. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in a lot of cases, they would say you basically you should. You know, just give the if you somebody has a need, just give it to you. Just give it to them. But if you let's say if it's a little bit more of a sum, then uh, but you're you're not going to charge any interest. And then he also said says in here like if you took their cloak as a pledge, you got to give it back to them in the evening because that's their blanket. That's pretty much it. You know, that's it's amazing. You know, I've kind of read stories about, um, for instance, I think it was somebody like in. Uh, the Andes areas where these these people would be walking along the road and they have a pretty long journey to take and when the evening comes they lay down on the side of the road and they sleep but you're in alpine you're in a high altitude climate drops down to the 30s mm -hmm. they're able to survive somehow I mean I would yeah. I would be in deep trouble yeah I wouldn't <laughs> survive the daytime walk 
<laughs> uh, but the, you know, they just kind of wrap around their their shawl, their mm-hmm. cloak, or whatever it is, and that's it. That's that's all you have. Uh, so tough people, tough people. Very tough. <laughs> in there. So uh, all all is about lending money. Um, do not blaspheme God. He says, uh, do not hold back offerings from your granaries or your vats. In other words, give to the Lord generously. Give for the work of the the, the Lord. Um, and then consecrating your firstborn to the Lord, uh, all those things they put out. And then kind of a strange thing at the end, you are to be my holy people, verse 31. So don't eat the meat of the animal torn by wild beasts, throw it to the dogs. In other words, it's, it's mangled by a wild beast. That's not fit for your consumption then. We were wondering what would happen, like, you know, uh, is this equivalent of roadkill? Well, you know, roadkill is like you hit by a car. What if it was hit by a cart or something? It's okay to cook. I don't know. We don't, right. we, don't, we don't know the answers to some of these things. But it was torn by a wild beast. You know, I, I, I would say this. Uh, if it's roadkill, I've only, I know some people do pick that up and they'll, they'll eat that. I would say you probably better get it like really quick. Otherwise, it kind of gets pretty nasty. As a rule of thumb, yeah. It, it's like, mm, well, okay, the deer was hit. I know it was hit five minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, haul it home and you can have some deer meat. But yeah, right. That would be not good. not like five hours later already. I think it's done. You know, personally, I don't think I would wait five hours. <laughs> right. That's, that's no good in there. All right. So anything else yet from this? It's kind of kind of an interesting chapter. Chapter. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, it, it's always kind of odd when you have to start like listing down for every wrong, like what the restitution is, and it. It puts you in kind of a kind of a weird space where you're like, what is justice? What is equal? Like, how do you pay for these things? But ultimately, this is the uh, like the result of kind of a broken world that we live in. Yeah. Like, this isn't. This is kind. Of, it seems like an ad hoc add on list, but that's because it wasn't supposed to be a broken world. Yeah. Like, this is what we kind of pay for. So uh, we're lucky that Jesus has a different type of restitution for us. Nah, he stood in our place. He took the punishment that we deserve. I mean, we deserve death. The wages of sin is death, but he takes that upon himself. So, yeah, I mean, that's just, that. That's what, how far God was willing to go. And, you, and you're right. I mean, all this is because of the brokenness. You don't have to have any of this stuff if we wasn't sin, mm-hmm. if we, went, we rebelled against God. But now we've got to think, okay, well, what do we do if this happens? What do we do if that yeah. happens? What do we do if somebody does this bad thing? What do we do if somebody does that bad thing? How do we interact with people? So, but I do like the concept of restitution. Yeah, uh, I think it would be a, a much better justice system than what we have right now. So, let's uh, let's go before the Lord and uh, lift uh, lift our nation before God's throne of grace. Father, we come in your presence. We pray that you would give wisdom and insight to us, and we pray for a calmness during the uncertainties that are going on, even still contention in the election. We ask, Lord God, that um, truth would prevail. Give us a calmness, a patience, so that we have a, that truth would prevail. Whatever, however that turns out to be, Lord God, that we would, that it would be fairly and equitably done, this whole thing, and so that people uh, can be assured uh, of, of what the outcome is. And Lord God, whatever the outcome is, we uh, ask that you would help us to. So be supportive of those who are elected, and we be, be in serious prayer for them, in serious prayer for our nation, that we need to turn to you, the true and the living God, that everyone who's elected to office, no matter what position, no matter what office they're elected to, that they would humble themselves and look to you. Well, So we let, ask for your wisdom and guidance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, verse 28, it does say, do not blaspheme God or curse the ruler of your people. Keep that in mind in, in social media and everything else where people are pretty quick to throw out curses on the candidates that they don't like. So uh, please keep those things in mind and let's be agents of peace in the midst of all this. Have a great week.